the Tuskegee Golden Tigers. It is the third annual Whitewater Classic, Phoenix City, Alabama. Now, Coach, before I let you go, I, I got to ask you this. I, I, I talked with Rod Reed, the head football coach at Tennessee State, uh, a few minutes ago, and, and I and I okay. tried to and I bounced the bounced a, a similar question to what I'm about to ask you off of him. Um, now we okay. know. Now we know that in the SIAC traditionally. Uh, the SIAC has taken on the CIAA and the Pioneer Bowl, the crown, uh, the, the Division II champion, the Division II HBCU champion. Uh, as, right. as of late, uh, there have been some issues, some sponsorship issues and some other things that have prevented the, the Pioneer Bowl from, from taking place. Um, this past football season, we had the inaugural uh, Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl that saw the MEAC take on the SWAC. Uh, to crown an outright FCS HBCU champion in North Carolina, A&T upended uh, Alcorn State to win the the first championship. Uh, but I've got to right. ask, I've got to ask you this, Coach, because we know those of us that follow HBCU sports, we know that that it's nothing new for a Division two school in the SIAC uh, to to defeat a school in the MEAC or the SWAC for that matter. Um, and I and I just got to ask you this: How would you? How would you like to see maybe uh, like a fourteen playoff like the the FBS does, uh, but you take you know the CIAA, the SIAC, the MEAC, and the SWAC, and have a four game playoff, uh, a two game playoff to really determine the outright HBCU champion? Because which I think that'd be something great. I mean, it, we we've been looking at something like that for a long time. It's just that it just hasn't got off. Whereas that we put it together, like you said, it always come down to finance. When it come down to finance, sometimes some sponsorship. Uh, back out, or they don't think they're going to be able to make the money back. But I think that would be something great for a historical black university to do with football to be able to get games like that together. Well, uh, I got you on board. So you know what? That's all I'm trying to do, man. Each every week, <laughs> and look for seriously. Every week, you know, I'm, I'm talking to coaches, and then every every uh, few weeks, uh, John Grant, who is the executive director of the Celebration Bowl, he's going to be joining the show as we count down to the Celebration Bowl. And, and so this was something that I kind of put in his ear uh, a few weeks ago. Was like, man, y'all might want to look at, you know, including the SIAC and the CIAA because this could, you know, this could actually make it bigger. I mean, because when you look at the excitement that the that the new college football playoff has versus the the old BCS, like like this thing is head and shoulders better, you know, than that the whole BCS crap. What do you think? Yep, I think I think that'll be great. I mean, it's the same thing, you know. Now we looking at the, uh, the best team in the HBCU, so let's go forward. I think it'd be something that would be productive, and at the same time, uh, people will come out and see that because I know they want to see something like that. Absolutely, absolutely. He is Dan Land, head football coach of the Albany State University Golden Rams. This weekend it happens, the third annual Whitewater Classic versus Tuskegee University. Coach Land, thank you so much for joining us on the show. We wish you nothing uh, but the best of luck this weekend, and we look forward to talking to you uh, at some point this season right here on the HBCU Report. Sounds good. Great stuff right there. Appreciate Coach Land for checking in with us. Always uh, uh, great to talk to him. Uh, now, Albany State, Tuskegee, two of the, the better programs in the SIAC uh, year in and year out, and I don't think that it, this would be a bad move to have them incorporated some, some kind of way into a playoff. Because we see these Division two schools knock off the, the SWAC and MEAC schools at the FCS level on, on a regular basis. You know, I always talk about during my tenure at Alabama State how I, we never beat Tuskegee, ever. And so uh, it's just one of those things where I think time will lead to progression. And so uh, that's, what, that's, that's what we're hoping for. All right, so coming up on the other side, we're going to hit you with the uh, last few news and notes from week one, some things that we didn't talk about. We had some payoff games uh, last weekend that ended just the way we expected them. Uh, We'll talk about those, and then we'll take a look at uh, today's schedule as we get you ready for a week two kickoff of HBCU football. This is the HBCU Report. I am Rob Calloway. We are powered by SportsNewsAndBrews.com, your official source for sports, black news, political news, and the latest on your favorite craft beers. Log on to SportsNewsAndBrews.com right now. And don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at HBCU Report. And we'll be right back after these words. It's the HBCU Report with Bob Calloway. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. 
Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037, so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right. But don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Connecting the SWAC, the MEAC, SIAC, and the CIAA, the HBCU experience lives here. It's the HBCU Report with Rob Calloway. Yep. Final segment of the HBCU Report for this weekend, Saturday, September 10th, 2016. Of course, you know what tomorrow is. Tomorrow is... um, September 11th, the day that will always go down in infamy, a day that uh, so many of us um, held our breaths and didn't know what was going to happen next. We didn't know if we were, uh, if the attacks were going to happen in in our fair cities. I mean, here in Atlanta, uh, you know, I could tell you exactly where I was. I remember exactly where I was uh, when, when, uh, when the, the, the planes hit, I was uh, on Gresham road and flat shows road at the, um, I guess it's a sit go now. It used to be a Phillips station. Uh, I saw it on TV. I thought they were watching a movie. And if you've ever heard me talk about this, you, you heard me say this. I thought they were watching a movie because I was sitting there and I'm watching the replay of the first plane hit the building. And I'm like, man, what are y'all watching? And they were like, oh, this is the news. I was like, the news? Let me get my butt home. And by the time I got home, and I was living in Congress, Georgia at the time, by the time I got home, the uh, I, I turned on the TV just in time to see the second plane hit the building. Unbelievable. An unbelievable date in American history, and uh, we never forget. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, my heart still goes out to all of those that, that lost loved ones uh, as a result of the attacks. Uh, my heart goes out to all of the soldiers that have, that have uh, put in the, the years and years and years, and my uncle uh, is one of those that, that actually had to go uh, over to the Middle East as a part of of uh, the ongoing efforts over there, if you will. Uh, he made it back safely, and uh, some of the other people I know made it back safely as well. And um, you know, I just commend I, I commend everybody because there are a few jobs that I just don't believe I could have. Being in the army or any armed forces is one. Being a, um, a police officer, firefighter, EMT, those are the others. I just don't think those are jobs that that I could do. And so um, I salute each and every one of you. Um, and again, this is the HBCU report uh, being heard via Spreaker.com. We are powered by SportsNewsAndBrews.com, your source for sports, black news, political news, and the latest on your favorite craft beers. Log on to SportsNewsAndBrews.com right now. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at HBCU Report. And uh, big shouts out to our uh, our guest on today's show, Dan Land of Albany State University in action today versus Tuskegee. And also Rod Reed, head football coach of the Tennessee State University Tigers, uh, taking on Jackson State in the 27th Annual Southern Heritage Classic in Memphis, Tennessee today. And so uh, big shouts out to those guys. I know it's early. Uh, well, Rod Reed is an hour behind me, so I know it's kind of early uh, for those guys. But, I, but it's football Saturday, and, and all coaches should be up, right? There shouldn't be any coach still asleep, I don't think. If you are, you, you're probably not a really good coach. You're probably not. All right, so last week, well, um, a couple things I want to talk about before we get out of here. we got about five minutes uh, before the end of the show. Uh, a few things I want to talk about, of course, uh, on this show, if you've never heard it, uh, we, we talk about some of the things that, you know, other people don't really talk about, like attendance. Like, attendance is major. I always like to know who was the attendance winner for X week, XYZ week. Right. And, and for this past week, uh, it was the John Merritt Classic that saw Tennessee State knock off uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff 44 nothing. Uh, they had uh, 15,000 in attendance. 
uh, Texas Southern and Prairie View for the opening of uh, Prairie View's new Panther Stadium. They had right at 15,000 in attendance as well. Uh, Fort Valley and Miles over at Legion Field had about 12,500. Now, what's so crazy about that? And I get that Fort Valley is, is, is here in Georgia and Miles is in Birmingham, but you know what? 12,000 people at Legion Field for an HBCU game is, is kind of ridiculous to me because when you think about what's going to happen in, in a, a little more than a month, the Magic City Classic, and you know it's going to be over 50,000 people in attendance in that stadium, I think that, you know, maybe this game, maybe this uh, Labor Day Classic needs an overhaul. I remember playing in the Labor Day Classic at Legion Field back my freshman year in college. We, we faced Jackson State, and the stadium was packed. So I'm not sure if, if, if the, the promoters actually need to go out and, 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 and take a look at this thing and say, hey, maybe we need to bring in uh, another school to face miles, a school that travels a little bit better than, than Fort Valley. You know, because that's really ultimately what it comes down to is the matchups. Uh, but when you talk about attendance from there, it's all downhill from there. Uh, 10,000 or less for uh, several of the other uh, black college football games from over the weekend. Um, also, something I like to, to turn your attention to is uh, each and every Thursday, uh, what we're going to do on our site, Spreaker.com uh, slash HBCU Report, is a throwback Thursday interview. And uh, this past Thursday, uh, the interview was with the late George Curry, who talked about uh, the legacy of HBCU sports and also uh, these payoff games that, that we know that the uh, FCS schools uh, have, have been taken in order to basically finance their athletic programs. And so uh, last week, it, it, I like to call it Slaughter Saturday. And uh, last weekend was Slaughter Saturday, part one. I guess this is going to be part two. Uh, last week, we saw uh, North Carolina Central, who won a share of the MEAC title, fall to Duke 49-6. Uh, South Carolina State fell to Central Florida 38 uh, nothing. It was Howard University 52, Maryland 13. Uh, we talked about the Jackson State UNLV game last Saturday morning, 63-13. Uh, Mississippi Valley fell to Eastern Michigan, 61-14. Uh, Saturday in Mark Rick's debut down in Miami, they spanked Florida a and 70-3. And then uh, Alabama a and led by James Spady, fell to Middle Tennessee, 55 to nothing. And so this week, we have seven HBCUs that are going to face FBS competi- competition. Uh, North Carolina Central and Western Michigan. Prairie View a and sees SEC competition in Texas A&M. Bethune-Cookman takes on North Texas. North Carolina a t is at Kent State. Uh, Gramlich State University on the road going west. They're going to take on Arizona. South Carolina State is at Louisiana Tech. Uh, Florida a and takes on Coastal Carolina. And Southern University faces Tulane. Now, I will be very surprised if next Saturday, when we sit down to do this show all over again, I'll be very surprised if I'm telling you that one of these HBCU schools upset uh, one of these uh, FBS foes. I'll be really surprised, but hey, again, anything is possible. This Coastal Carolina team, Tulane, uh, Kent State, North Texas, Western Michigan, in my, in my mind, yeah, they could get got any given Saturday, if you will. And so uh, the payoff games, Slaughter Saturdays continue uh, right here on the HBCU report. And um, uh, one other thing that I definitely have to mention uh, before we close the show out last night uh, was the 2016 uh, induction into the Nate Smith basketball hall of fame, Allen Iverson, Shaquille O'Neal, Yao Ming, Tom Izzo, uh, Jerry Reinsdorf. They headlined the class, uh, Cheryl Swoops, uh, former NBA star, uh, but before I get up out of here, I, I definitely have to mention uh, that Prairie View A&M's uh, Zelmo Beatty and coaching legend John McClendon were both inducted into uh, the Hall of Fame yesterday, and that's major. Um, uh, John McClendon, actually, uh, his, coach, his uh, coaching career was extensive. Uh, North Carolina Central, uh, also at Hampton, Tennessee State, and Kentucky State, and uh, Cleveland College as well. And so uh, congratulations uh, once again to uh, Zelmo Beatty, who, by the way, uh, for those of you that don't know who Zelmo Beatty is, uh, Beatty uh, actually scored more than 15,000 points and grabbed nearly 10,000 rebounds during uh, his uh, professional career in the ABA, won the 1971 ABA championship. 
All right, so folks, that about do it. We got 20 seconds before we got to get up out of here. And so uh, don't forget, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter.